chose to think that provides business owners and entrepreneurs with the solutions we need to thrive. And as Lamb says, March 2011 maintained a reputation for being hospitable, committed, value driven, sales orientated, and an incredible team player and team builder. Randall. <laughs> I think everybody, uh, a lot of people have hit home on it, um, is that we just get to meet new people and, and find new friends and open up new opportunities, maybe not even for ourselves, but maybe we can open up an opportunity for someone else. So it's it really, uh, a lot of the feeling that I get from networking is just like one win for everyone because you meet new people, find new products, have new experiences, and you know I usually leave always happy. So that's why I network. That. So you know what I'm going to do? That's a gift card to the Madeline Thank you. Thank you. for participating. So, Thank you. congratulations to you. So, it pays to go ahead and be the first person to answer. One more. Who else has an answer for what is network? Why are you doing it? Stuart, Stuart Wald said that your prosperity is not judged by how much money you have in the bank. It's how many people you meet and keep up with weekly. Okay. And I know that's true. Wow. That's awesome. There you go. There you go. Okay, so these answers are good because this is these are the things that motivate Andrew and Charlene for them to do their networking. But what I want you to write on this line, because basically I'm not saying that what I'm giving you here is the end all be all, but Peter asked me to give my two cents, that's so that's what I'm gonna give. So on that first line where it says we should network to, I want you to write, learn, learn. We should network to learn. And under that line, I want you to put learn what with a question mark. So number one, I should network, because that means all of us, not just you. That's me too. I should network, one, is what I do, is to learn how to be hospitable. Learn how to be hospitable. What is a person, what, what's in your mind when you think about being hospitable? And I need to go real quick because we're going to actually give a demonstration of this. Her name? I mean, uh, it's okay. It's Regina. But Regina. to show yourself friendly, to show yourself as a resource and to uh, to be to be open. Okay. I appreciate that. Sorry. That's not your name. That's all right. I wrote it down and everything, too. That's funny. <laughs> so what we're going to do, Helen and I are actually going to give a demonstration of the next time you go to a networking group, what you can actually do to be hospitable. And she's going to be my test subject, and I'm going to talk to her. <laughs> 
Hey, how you doing? My name is Fran. What's your name? I'm Helen Bivlis. Oh, wow, Helen. What, what is it that made you find out about this group today? Well, I was just looking around for my new business to meet people and form relationships. So I said, well, Roswell's not that far from my house. So okay. I'd like to come here and meet awesome. some people. So this is your first time here? Yes, it is. Wow. So that's cool. So you probably don't know too many people here then? No, not really. Okay. Well, what I want to do, I'm going to have a seat for you right next to me because I don't want you to feel alone. Well, I appreciate it. And if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. So that's a perfect example. What, what happens with this situation right here, I've seen it because um, I've actually been in the event business before with my wife and I. And when you go to an event, which is what this is, the first thing that happens when people hit that door, they're nervous. They're very nervous. They don't know what to do. They come in and they go, oh my goodness, what am I supposed to do? So if there's a happy face greeting them, shaking their hand and doing what I just did, actually bringing them into a place where they can feel comfortable, then that tension is relieved. Our next point, number two, I should network to learn how to be committed. Mm. <laughs> yes, I love it. So number two, I should network to learn how to be committed. What does that mean? Really quick. Somebody give me an example of what it means to be committed. Be consistent. Marianne. Be consistent. Be here on time. Okay. Okay. You know, what's interesting, uh, Joel Peskin, who does a lot of events, everybody knows Joel's mm -hmm. list is huge. Mm -hmm. I'm on it too. We were talking earlier, and he said, you know what, what I want to do is get the information for the next time that you guys have your meeting because I want to commit to be there. And I said to him, man, that's awesome because a lot of times what we'll hear is people will say, yeah, I'm going to work on that, or I'm going to try, or yeah, I'm going to see what I can do. Those type of things, very ambiguous because people don't want to commit. But what I like about what Joe said, and in fact, I told him that, I said, man, that's awesome that you said you're going to commit. So that means that he's on the hook now to be at our event. Yeah. So <laughs> commitment is huge for networking. And you can actually, in this group, you can actually see who commits and who doesn't. One of the things that you can see as a tip is when people RSVP and never show up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. <laughs> so what we're going to do is do a demonstration, Helen and I, of what we can, what you can actually do to demonstrate commitment. We didn't practice this. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Helen, you know what? What did you think about this meeting today? I thought it was great. You know, I really liked it, too. I liked the format that Peter had and all the different things that he did. And a lot of the different people who were here, I've never met before, which was awesome. You know, I was thinking that maybe we could get together pretty soon after this. Um, I'm thinking maybe we can get together on Tuesday at 9 o'clock right here at Pranera. Okay. That do you think great. that that's something that you could do? Yes, I can commit to okay. that. <laughs> exactly. So if you notice, commitment is specifics. I met with, there was a financial planner guy who I, I will not name. He's not here. He said, let's meet next week. I said, well, yeah, that's cool. He said, um, yeah, like Starbucks. And when, when people say that, I said to myself, okay, well, I don't, I just kind of put it out there because I do a lot of meetings. And then he called me up one day and I happened to be in the area. He said, yeah, Brandon, I'm here. And I'm like, well, where are you? I'm at Starbucks, where are we supposed to meet? And I said, okay, so, because I usually put things, you know, I, I, I mess up like a lot of people, but usually I put it in my phone. And so I realized because it wasn't in my phone, he really, he never really said, this is where we're gonna meet at this time, which is why I didn't know, which is not commitment. That's kind of like, you know, in the universe somewhere, <laughs> kind of line up, you don't want that. So let's move on for sake of time. Number three, I should network, write this down, to learn how to provide value to the group. Learn how to provide value to the group. Question to the audience, what do you think it is, to, what it means to add value to the group? Andrew, again. Um, uh, well, <clears throat> for example, uh, I used to, when I first started networking, I would not really pass any referrals because I thought that none of it was applicable to me. I was like, 
okay, no, not really you. Maybe my sister might like that, but I don't feel like talking to you. And so, I'm just being honest. Well, you know, like the honesty. It was, it was a shy aspect, at least at first. And so it was like, you know, I'd rather just not even endeavor into that. And then as I built and I started to realize, hey, I'm not getting anything either. Um, I started to realize, hey, you know, I need to add something to the group. I need to offer something. So whether it actually applied to me directly, you know, as, as it started to go around and we do the referrals, I'd say, okay, I have a friend that needs your service. I have a family member that needs your service. These are helping these people. It might not directly help me. As I started to do that, they leads would start to come my way and it would come full circle, so. Okay, I appreciate that. That's, that's a good expression. Like I said, there's no wrong answers here. One of the things that people who do events really enjoy is when a person helps out. Peter Gibson does a lot of events. I do, Joel. Um, there's a number of people here who do events. What's valuable to us, as a hint, is this room when we came in here was not set up like this. Peter usually is going from one end of town to the other end of town, doing all of his networking things and keeping his business afloat. One thing that's very valuable is that it is true that we all get a benefit from being here, but sometimes pitching in to help because these chairs and all the things that happen for this group don't magically appear. Panera doesn't go, man, this is how they want to set it up. They don't do that. So what's valuable, and I've actually seen people do this, they come in, they make sure everything is set up, make sure Peter is good for what he has to you know, get done, and just anything that you can do to pitch in, just think to yourself, okay, if I was doing this group, what is it that I would need? And try to go ahead and do that, that's valuable. Let's move on to number four. Number four. I should network to learn how to sell. Learn how to sell. Unfortunately, gang, some people do not know how to sell. Some people don't like the word sales. I would venture to say if you took a poll of 10 people, six or seven would go, when you say the word sales, they cringe. Here's the reason. Most people do not, that are salespeople, don't have sales skills because they haven't studied it. Anything that you want to be good at, event planning, plumbing, being the magnet man, you have to study that. If you don't and you avoid it because you don't like how people deal with you and how that makes you feel, you're going to always go, yeah, so you sell. Ooh, you can't do that. Zig Ziglar says that, no, Tom Hopkins says that sales is the backbone of how America runs. If there's nobody selling anything, none of us make money. Even if you work a corporate job where you punch a clock, somebody's selling something in order for your position to exist because that's how the money is generated. So what we're going to do, Helen is going to give an example of just a, a brief type of sales process that you can do. Hey, Randall. How you doing? Hey, Helen. How's it going? Good. Um, I just wanted to ask you, um, gosh, your skin looks really great. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. How about this side? No, it's great. Okay. Yeah. So, do you do anything in particular to take care of your? I think skin? it's in the jeans. You think so? Well, what what if we would be able to enhance your already handsome face? What do you think? Oh wow, that'd be awesome. So, are you willing to try some skin here? I'd be interested. Yeah. Okay, great. So okay. We'll meet on a certain, you know, tomorrow at two o'clock. Is that good for you? Okay. Yeah. Great. Cool. So, that's an example. What she, what's interesting about what she said is, some salespeople will tell you how bad life is and how you have this problem. She complimented how I look. Everybody loves it on the positive. Everybody loves to hear about themselves. But she didn't use the she didn't use the the fact that I said that you know I was pretty good with how I look. I'm great. I'm not saying you know I need good skin. But she used that as an opportunity to say that she can enhance my experience for what she had. And so anybody, most people, if you have a chance to improve, they're interested in that. So that's just one way, even in whatever business you do, that might be something that you can do as a, a sales tactic. I mean, not tactic, technique. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't do tactics. So number five, another closing up. I should network to learn team building skills learn team building skills.
learning team building skills is one of the things that's probably most difficult because when we went to school, we weren't taught to work as a team. Helen can attest to this because as she mentioned earlier, she also is a teacher. Most of us, if we collaborate in school, that's called cheating. But in the business world, if you notice the people who do really well have a really nice team. So, networking will help you to develop team building skills. There's actually people here, whenever I network, I'm looking at people in their different skill sets to kind of offset the things that I might not be good at. And if you think that you're good at everything, that's not being honest. There's some people who are better speakers. There's some people who are better organizers. There's some people like Kate Ingalls, she's helping me with the camera back there. I can't do that and do this at the same time. So she's on my team right now and help. So those are all, those are the things that I want to share because we're out of town or out of time right now. But if you have any questions or anything, my information is at the bottom. But I want to thank Helen Bullis, Kate Ingalls, and Peter Gibson for giving me this opportunity. Thank all right. You. Right, right. Well, thank you. Some good content. That's what we need. Content. We connect with each other and create content. All right. Let's, I'm going to wrap this up because it's right at 11 o'clock. Um, Joel, do you, do you have some commentary, some well, events you want to share? Um, can I just add a little to what uh, Randall was talking yeah, about? Um, we all go to meetups. We all come out to network. And I've been doing this for about six years or so. And like this, step one, you, you come to a breakfast or a lunch meeting, it's organized like this. But I think the new, let's say call it golf course, is the business after hours networking. I was talking to Jerry. We all hear what people have to say. We may want to meet with them for breakfast or meet with them for lunch. But I think the real, let's say, close or the friendships or really learning about that person is at the nightly events where people let their hair down. And I've noticed that because I've gone to a lot of chambers and business associations, but it's all the same people, you know, 95% of the people are the same people. And that's great because they build that relationship, but it's the same fishbowl. And after you run out of those fish, because not many people are joining those organizations, where do you go? And I'm not trying to promote myself, but because I've gone to all of those situations, I've created an after hours for people in meetups that are not affiliated with chambers or business associations or other civic groups. Uh, and last event I had about 50% of the people were people I've never seen before. I don't know where they came from. But everybody came up to me and said what a great time they had, the relationships they built. Things were happening because maybe they went to a meeting like this or they went to a lunch meeting. And I'm not promoting my meeting, but go to the, the nightly events where people are having fun. You learn about them. You can talk about nothing about your business, but you like that person. We know there's 100 insurance agents and 100 real estate agents and financial advisors. But it's the one that you click with, they'll either give you their business or they'll refer you to one. And I just really believe that these are great meetings, but for the people who are not affiliated with other kind of situations, get out to one of those after hours. They're on my list. If you don't get my list, please give me a card so you can see what's going on. And it'll greatly help your business. And of course, I'm having my uh, next event at the Andretti's April 22nd. The place holds 400 people. We're going to have a great time. Let everybody know it's going to be a fun night. Okay, anything else? I have a, an event on Saturday, uh, this right Sunday, now. 3 right to uh, 5. I'm looking for four people who want to change their life uh, with their wigs.